Welcome back to my Picks in Sight tutorial for Absolute Beginner series. Now in the last three, four videos, five videos, we covered, um, well if we go all the way back actually, we did crop, we did the uh, automatic background uh, extractor, we also did the dynamic background extraction so that we could remove the color cast, the green cast, and um, some of the haze and gradients. Then we, some of us resize it. If you didn't want to work with a 5,000 pixel image, we re reduced it by 50%, 40%, 60%. Then we did with the background neutralization. We dealt with color calibration and the photometric calibration, which was very nice uh, process. We did a little bit of cloning to remove artifacts. And now we're going to work on removing noise. This for me, was the hardest of all module. After that, it's it's nothing but fun. But this was very difficult, and according to other PixInsight users online who are very, very good at doing PixInsight, even Warren Keller in the book, this is another one of these processes where you really have to take your time and do it properly because it affects the rest of the process all the way down to uh, finishing the finishing touches is color saturation so why are we removing the noise now why not remove it uh, in the next five or six processes because what happens is we're going to stretch the image not in this video but in the next one and you'll be stretching the noise right you'll be stretching all this noise let me zoom right in all this noise is going to be stretched so why don't why, why we should deal with it right now. So let's get to it. It's fairly long, not long, but um, <laughs> fairly, uh, yeah, it takes a bit of time. So a couple of things we're gonna do. I'm gonna try to show you, remember, this, these, city, these videos are to try to make it simple and uh, easy uh, to, get, to get the best out of it. So in order to deal with the noise, we're going to have to create a mask and I'll, I'll walk through it slowly and I'll show you how it's done. Um, and then you'll see what the mask is. Remember, this video is for beginners. What is the mask? What does the mask do? How can I use the mask? How, what does masking the galaxy and the stars do? Or the background for that matter. So, okay. So here's the icon here. Now, depending on PixInsight's version, I think it's 50, 1352 or 1353, this icon doesn't come up. It's actually under image, extract, extract luminance. So I guess we'll do this and I'm not going to use the icon in the menu bar. So let's extract the luminance from M31. So let's hit that, extract luminance. It should create a uh, black and white image and let's stretch it by using the transfer function. So there we go, black and white. The next thing we want to do, because you can't just apply this mask to the galaxy because it, it's it's linear. Next thing we want to do is let's just unstretch it. Open up your stream transfer function icon. Bring it here. Then open histogram transformation and put it there. Now with no view selected, we're going to auto stretch the luminance so go ahead and auto stretch it using this little black and red circle then grab the triangle down here and hold on to it with your mouse and drag it right onto the bar and drop it and you see the curve is fully applied to the image but we don't see it because we didn't create a preview we don't need the preview but we do need to stretch the image. And we did by drag and dropping it on the bar here. Now take this triangle because this is going to be stretching this luminance image. Grab the triangle, drop, drop, drag it onto here. It should turn completely white. Okay. Go up here and reset the transfer function. There we go. Move that down. We can now close the histogram. We don't need it. Now this image no longer has that little green bar. See the little green bar here where it says this image has not been stretched and this one has. The mask needs to be stretched for whatever reason. Grab it, grab the tab 
I'm going slow here so you show it. Drag it right on the edge of that one. And if you did it properly, like I just showed you, you should have a nice bright red image. This is a mask that we can use in the uh, in this in this way or in the inverted way. So if we go up here and go mask, we can invert it so that, well, before we do that, let's talk about this mask. Everything in red at the moment, everything that's bright red is protected. The stars, let me zoom in a little bit, the stars that are white, they're not protected and the galaxy is not protected, which is good if you're trying to do work on the galaxy and on the stars. This is great. But if you want to remove the noise out of the background, you won't be able to because you're protecting the background. So what do we do? And by the way, when you have a mask on, this is a nice dark brown. The tab changed color. It's brown. So let's go to mask and invert or flip it. Now the galaxy is protected. The stars are protected. But now the, the background becomes vulnerable to whatever we want to do to it. And of course, we want to remove the noise. So again, go back to mask. All we're going to do now is just going to hide it, not remove it, just don't show it. Okay, so it's still there. How do we know? Because the tab is still brown. So we have a mask. In fact, if you hit control K, on, off, on, off, K, 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 control K. That's just a quick access. So we have, we have, um, the background is now uncovered <clears throat> and the galaxy is protected from the mask and the stars are protected. We're going to need now, in order to remove uh, the noise, and there are many, many, many ways. We'll go through that in a few seconds. At least I'll show you the different processes that are available. Uh, if this video, if I did all, if I use two or three or four, this could take a couple of hours. Um, so I'm, we're just going to use the one for now. And maybe I'll make a second one. And if that went well, I'll make a third. So you'll have three ways to remove noise. Okay, so to remove noise, we want to be able to... First, we want to create a small preview box. Right, little preview box. We want to choose... Hmm. Sometimes I want to include the galaxy in it a little bit. So there's going to be some stars. Maybe some background. It is the background. And a little bit of the galaxy. Maybe I'll move that over just a little bit more. And I'll go over here to the preview tab. Okay, now I can see my uh, a little bit of the galaxy, a lot of the background, because it's the background I'm trying to, to work with. So what are the available processes that we can use for removing noise? I use four different ones on four different targets. For simplicity, but this is not necessarily very, very simple. It's still pretty tricky. Go to Process, All Process, and I'll just show you the ones that are available. And normally I would go down to multi-scale linear transform the little icon that has an arrow point to the left that's one by far everybody's been using lately picks inside even on the forum everybody likes acd noise rejection noise rejection or yeah re not rejection sorry reduction you cannot remove the noise in an image but you can reduce it and that's very important to keep note you cannot remove all the noise because it's in it's embedded in the entire image what we're doing is re we're reducing the amount of noise so the image looks smoother the background specifically the background so acd is two this is the number one that i use acdnr is the, the number one that everybody's been using we can do one of those later a true version one and two those are apparently old but i found they work really good so um, i have some that are already preset Maybe I can do a video on that and just show you all my numbers. Then you can copy them and change them as you wish. Another one is TGV denoise. And if I do some research on these, I'll be able to be more specific as to, well, why is ACDNR better than TGV? They both reduce noise in different algorithms, and that's fine. So at the expense of wasting an hour talking, Let's go to multi-scale linear transform. And here it is. Here's the uh, the window. And I already created an icon right here. And I called it denoiser. 
So you know how to do that. You know how you drag and drop it and you create it. So I made it ahead of time. Okay, so we have our preview uh, window. And we also want to open the little preview window here because what we want to do is we want to test it. We want to test it back and forth. So here it is. Sometimes it doesn't show up. It shows the whole galaxy. So make sure you drop down, go to preview one. Here it is. All right, so so far, nothing's happening here. The second thing you want to choose is, you know how it says target RGB? It's recommended to go to luminance. Why? I don't know. If you want, you can apply your uh, noise reduction to RGB if you wish, which is right here, RGB. But I've been, okay, I uh, use luminance. And you should try RGB. Okay, so the first thing is select the first bar and choose noise reduction. We're not playing with any other function, just noise reduction. Leave everything at by default. So we have a threshold of three. The amount, we have to drop it down to about 30%. That's, that's just, according to PixInsight, less is more. And already I see a difference. And iterations, how many times should I hit the first level of pixels, which is level one? Three times. One, two, three. Now, it's going to be really difficult, I think, for you YouTubers to look at this and see. If I hit this little circle, this is before, after, before, after. Here's before, and it's a little snappy, grainy. And this is after, it's a lot better. But you won't see it, I don't think. Let's go to level two, the second wave, the second layer of pixels. Again, noise reduction three. This time we're going to drop it down to two, two, back down to 30-ish. You can experiment between 30 and 40. Depends how noisy the image is. Okay, so I'll go back to before, after. That's grainy. That's softer. And, of course, we'll go to the third level hit the noise reduction, go right down to 1.0, so I'll go 500, 1.0, way down to the 30-ish. You don't have to be accurate. It could be 30, 35, 33, whatever, anything around that. And always one iteration. So it's 3, 2, 1, 30, 30, 30, 3, 1, 1 for the numbers. And if we go before, and if I have a look at it, That's grainy, that's smooth, that's grainy, that's smooth. And the more aggressive you are with this amounts, with these amounts, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, it's going to be really, really hard. It's going to start to destroy the background and cause all kinds of uh, unevenness. In fact, the background just doesn't become the background anymore. Uh, maybe one day I'll just sh show you how crazy you can destroy an image uh, by using too much noise um, reducing. The other thing is you want to keep an eye on is the stars. If I go undo, undo, redo, undo, you, can, you guys probably can't even see the difference. But it just went from grainy to very smooth. So, okay. So, we're happy with this. And it is on luminance. So, I'm just going to close the preview because I'm happy with, like, with what I see here. And, again, a little less is more. So, we're happy with the preview part. <clears throat> Grab your triangle. Or if you want, you can hit the big blue square. Drag it, let PixInsight do its thing. Excuse me. <coughs> that didn't take very long. And if we uh, zoom in a bit, background's a bit smoother. Here there's the undo multi scale, so I can undo it. Takes a few seconds. Okay, that is a little grainier. That's much smoother. Okay, so not as hard as we thought. And you're going to have to want to adjust these. The 3, 2, 1 is fine, but the 30 or 20 or 40, depending on how hard you want to hit the background, it's up to you. So we did the luminance, uh, luminance layer of the pixels. Now, if you zoom in here a lot, you notice there's these blue, purple, green patches, this chromiance. We need to remove the chromiance in the background. And we can do that by just changing the drop menu to chromiance. Okay, so let's zoom back out. Go back to our preview. And now, 
we're going to go to the amount of layers on when we were on luminance we had four layers that's I believe that's standard that's default if we go to chromiance we're gonna go seven layers and of course you want to open up your little preview windows because it's in real time computing multi scale linear transform cache let's see if it if it uh, took the whole galaxy or if it just took our preview give that a second okay it select the preview again again it's down here if you want to select it preview one oh one and now remember to reset all these numbers here in fact when I hit reset it's probably going to change the target back to uh, RGB but that's fine always reset this so we start from fresh there we go all right so I should have showed you that let's go back to our layers now we're going to be working on chromians seven layers give it a second this is a big process chrome give that a few seconds and now we're going to have one to 128 we're going to work with only the first four layers so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over a little bit go back to M31 click up here where it says edit preview mode so click on it so I, I can grab it and move it around right now we don't have to look at the galaxy but we're going to want a smaller part of the preview and if you see every every time I made a move off here it showed up here now I can see the purple and the blue the uh, blotchiness there we go background blotch color blotch and I can see it now so whatever I do here I'll see it much better so what did I do I just want to make the preview a little smaller and just concentrate on the background because it is the blotchiness we want to get rid of as much as possible in fact because it's YouTube I may have to want to even make it a little smaller so you guys can see something happen here right here hopefully now you can see it maybe I'll move the window over there a little bit I will actually make this way bigger there you, you can now see how blotchy the colors are okay so don't forget we're in chromians we have seven layers and we took that from here layers seven number one noise reduction keep it on three keep the amount on one reiteration one same thing three one one give it a second every time I hit it this, this starts to lighten up number three or layer three three one one and four three one one now that's gone from being blotchy to being a, a grayish color which is exactly what we wanted now at the expense of hitting it too hard I may want to sometimes I'll reduce this to 80 and I'll go back to that number four number three maybe 90 so anywhere around there no, no. so 100 100 or it's actually 1.0 1.0 0.9 0 0.8 3, 3, 3, 3 across the board so if I go before a second before there's all that purplish uh, bluish reddish greenish blotchiness after gone before it's there after much much subdued so I'm happy with that I'm going to try to close the preview sometime pick since I says it's tied up please wait a minute and now we're going to drag and drop it or hit the big blue square which is apply global but we can drag it and we can drop it and to see the difference you'd have to zoom in pretty close quite a few layers gonna take a, a minute or so okay it's done let's have a look so that's pretty nice that background is a lot smoother all that um, heavy blotching is gone um, it's not super 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 clean it, ca it can't be I mean cameras have noise that's just that's life that's reality but that's very nice now we'll be able to work with this later so um, hopefully you can see these numbers hopefully the, re the videos resolution is high enough 
If not, send me an email. I'll send you some sh screen grabs and of just of my numbers, and then you can apply it. So that's good. So we'll go Control K again. Make sure that we were actually working on the background because the background is not protected. So we're still good there. That's fine. Let's remove the little preview window by going to the little icon over here. Remove, or you could have right clicked and delete. The mask is still on there. We know that because if we go show mask, it's still there. And we can invert it back to the galaxy. But at this point, all of our steps, cropping, green cast, two, resize three, four, five, six, seven. Seven videos have been done. This is number eight, removing the noise. And now we can go mask remove mask notice that this window once I applied the mask on here like this I didn't close it don't close it just hit the shade and put it down here out of the way because if you close it well there won't be a mask to use and I did that at first and I'm like what happened I thought I made a mask and I applied it yeah but you closed it keep it open so dark brown we have a mask go to mask remove now if you wish you can remove this. We won't use it again. Yep. Go ahead and... Yep. Okay. So we're good. So we've denoised the image. The next step, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this in both the same video instead of making another one. This way you don't have to download two videos. Right up until this point, this image has been linear. How do we know? Because when we take the screen transfer function and we say undo this image here um, it's not stretched let's stretch it first the pix insight way which everybody I suppose is doing that these days it's the simpler faster more accurate way but I'll show you a little adjustment at the end so to do that open up this screen transfer function window you can keep this dark in other words undone open up histogram transformation right and where it says no view selected we're going to need to select uh, m31 linear one which should be in the drop down menu there it is one and a little bit of our histogram showed up on the hard left which means this hasn't been pulled yet and you also want to go to that little check mark track view okay you've done this a few times with me so far in all the videos again we're going to stretch it auto that should pull the image really hard. Grab same as the mask. Grab this little triangle and drag it, drag it right here on the bottom. And that's going to pull the histogram as hard as it can without damaging the black and the white. Okay, so we can close this now. And we want to open up the preview. Here's the preview. So why is it white? Because we double stretched it. We stretched it once in um, STF and again here in the local histogram so go up to the top here and just re just reset it there there's your stretch here is before after before after so now sometimes when I do this and I let PixInsight do the screen transfer function stretch this is overkilled I mean it's washed out and the background's almost not white but so bright and I really don't like it I don't like the the washed out images I like them a little darker it's my personal opinion so and this this histogram right here and if you look at the uh, the blue the red the green some yellow which is RGB and these two colors mixing and the white uh, this is a pretty good indicator that so far you've done a good job and all your colors are, are very nice okay let's continue so down here if you just click in this window anywhere and you scroll your mouse you can, oh, you can, uh, I'm scrolling back towards me. I can think with the mouse. I can make this a little wider, a little bigger, so I can see where these two sliders are. And you can see them down here. So I look at my image and go, hmm, well, I'm going to back off on the, on the background a bit, which is going to make it a little bit brighter. See the histogram is going towards the right, so it's going brighter towards 255. Zero being black, 255 being pitch white in, in Photoshop. And I'm going to grab the midtones and I'm going to pull back a bit back 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 until I hit about 
until I'm comfortable with the back right about there. And this is where my histogram is. It's never a quarter or half or three quarters. It's already, it's always, I guess if you break it into four, if you break it into eighths, it'd be uh, one eighth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, one eighth of the histogram. Or at least visually, if you look at where I am, you know where I am. If I do this, if I really pull it, well, now you can see what's happening if you look at the at M31. It's completely destroyed. Uh, it's just too white. Uh, you know, there's, there's no contrast. I don't like that. That's 50%. This is 35%. This is 25%. This is 15-ish. This is about 10. This is about 10. I, I like the background a little bit darker. And the lanes come out a bit more. So if you're happy with this, make sure you play with this to get what you want here, what you like here. Um, and if you're happy with what's happening here with how you've used your slide, remember, I'm just sliding this. Sliding the mouse just makes you zoom in a bit more. Okay, and you, there's a slider here so you can find, <laughs> find out where it is if you lose track of it. So, okay, I'm happy with this. This is what I want. So I'll close the preview. This is not stretch, but it's about to be drag, drop. Give it a second. And there's your galaxy. And we're done with the histogram transformation. As of from now on, all, all eight parts of the tutorial has brought you to this part here. Where from here on in, it becomes very personal in taste as to what we're going to do with. And of course, I don't think they're here. Yeah, there's one. Local histogram, HDR, and Unsharp Mask. Those three, at least. Now, there's one thing before we go any further, because at this point, you should really save this. Notice the green bar's gone. That's because we're no longer linear. We are non-linear. We have stretched this as far as we would like it to. Now, this can still be stretched. I can prove it right now. I'm going to I'm going to hit the, um, let's see, you guys are used to seeing this. I'm going to hit this, and it's going to pull it even harder, auto stretch it even further. You see? But that's not where I want it. I found it's it's too much, and it's, it's making it a little bit rough again. So back to reset. There's where I like it. File, save as. This time I'm going to give it another name. Just going to remove the one, slide over a bit. Non, not nine, non underscore linear. And now I'll know that from now on, this is the one I'll be using. I can save that. 32-bit for now. XISF. Okay, here is our working image. It's been denoised. And the first thing I notice now is there's still a bit of green in the image. Even though we had a nice color calibration, everything worked out fine. I'm not sure what happened along the way. Maybe as we were stretching it, it got a little bit greener. And for that, there's a little cute little icon you can use for just removing the green. It's not called D green. I called it that. Let's open it up. S C N R R process. All process. S C N R right here for those who are looking for it in the processes. So let's get out of there. Color to remove green just the individual green pixels. Normally, I use 100% if, it, if there's a lot of green, but because this is RGB, I don't want all the green gone. There's no green in the galaxy. There's no green in the stars. But for all intents and purposes, I like to not hit it so hard, maybe 90, sometimes even 80. So let's drag and drop that. Watch what happens to the galaxy. Seems that it's a bit green greenish to me. Let's see if it makes a difference. Oh, that's very, very nice. It just went to... Uh, olive green to a nice light brown, blue brown. Yeah, did I take too much out? Let's have a look. Always check your um, check your star. The blue still there. I think the red is still there. I think we can also have a look. Have a look at the histogram. How's the color? Looks good. Let me scroll this so it goes back to zero. The histogram looks good. It's, it's showing white. Okay, so you can de-green or remove some of the green pixels 
uh, by using this process called SC noise reduction. So it's probably the, uh, and by the way, you can, if you have too much red, you can remove them red. Or if there was too much blue, if it was really, really, really blue, you could remove some blue. Uh, normally, it's a green, and everybody on Pixel site, uh, websites, and on YouTube use it to remove the green cast. So we're just going to leave it at like that. Okay. That was removing noise in its simplest form using... Did I create that? Multi-scale linear transform right here. I always like to open it a second time towards the end of the video. At first we used luminance. We entered three values, three, two, one, and then we switched, we applied it, and we went back, and that was under four layers for luminance. Then went to chromiance. We dropped down to seven, and we went the first four, three, 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 three. And for the, the amount, vary from 100 to 90 to 80. Look at your image. The deblotching, it came from very, very, very blotchy to a very nice neutral gray, and that worked very well. Okay, I think that's going to finalize part seven of uh, removing the noise in its simplest form and finally stretching the image uh, automatically using the screen transfer function and the histogram as a combination where you drag the triangle onto it. Uh, you drag the triangle from the image onto here. I'm not going to do it now, though. Uh, and then that stretches it like crazy. You can go to your preview, make sure that it's, it's you, you know, you, it's not too dark and it's not too bright, you know, somewhere where you're very happy with it. Finally, you can just close off the, or the close the preview and then drag it onto your image, and that green bar will disappear. You'll be you'll be stretched. So watch this over and over and over. For me, the first time, oh, it was it was overwhelming. I'm I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, but now it's just second hand. I just I don't even think about it. Boom, boom, boom. I just do it. And it works great on all images, and it's nice that it's not permanent. You, you stretch it, then you come here and you say, "Well, I'm, uh, this is where I want it. I'd like to play with this." I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the top histogram here, and I'm saying, "Well, this is this is way too bright, and this is black, black, black. I, it was already black. I don't want it black." So you know, I like the I li I love the uh, not one third, but two eighths, <laughs> whatever this whatever ten to fifteen percent of this whole one hundred percent. 100% window, if you, if you want to call it that. Um, yeah, and of course, if you want to get, if you want to have more access to it, you can widen out your windows. Okay, I think that's going to be it. Let me think. The next video will be working with the galaxy itself, and how we can bring out the dust lanes and bring out some detail, some contrast, the local local histogram. Uh, which is these icons here. I can I can open them just before, even though we're not going to do it now. We're going to be working with local histogram equalization. We're going to look at HDR and also Unsharp Mask. Hopefully all three in the same video or three very short five or ten minute videos on each one so that you can use all three or just two or just the one. Thank you for watching. This was fun. I enjoyed making these. If you like these videos, please subscribe down below. Don't forget to mention it to your friends uh, and push the like button and leave a comment. Say uh, whatever you like, whatever your comments are. Uh, didn't understand this part or you're going too fast or that was great. Keep up the good work. Whatever you like. These, these are done for people who have no clue what to do with PixInsight. And it is a very, very complicated program in five years from now you'll still be learning something it doesn't matter this is not a competition it's a hobby it's for fun okay guys thank you very much for watching see you in the next video we'll look at uh, making this image this m31 which is our target uh a little bit better a little bit brighter a little bit uh uh we're going to enhance a lot of different parts of it and i think you'll have you'll have a lot of fun thanks for watching